We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. Hey, everybody. This is Nick Mayhew, three-time gold medalist and three-time world record holder, and you're listening to Power 98.5. You're listening to Power 98.5, powered by United Angels Dream, your number one resource for public relations, entertainment, and multimedia. Contact them today at unitedangelsdream.com. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Quoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Empowering listeners from the U.S. to the U.K. Live on air with Stephen Quoco. Hey, what's up? My name is Grant Kenoki. I'm a singer, songwriter, producer, and artist, and you're listening to Power 98.5. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from here and all around the world. I'm Stephen Cuoco. It's a great day today. Happy weekend to everyone. And wow, it is, even though the sun's not out, there's an overcast. Love it. Kind of windy. We've been getting lots and lots and lots of rain. Love the refreshment of it. But also what's most important, 2023 has been a great, great year. And I hope it's been a great year for everyone else. Whether you're listening to Power 98.5 on the iOS or Android app, Alexa, or on Power985.com, remember, we are your top number one premier destination in radio for all things new sports entertainment and what's trending. Remember, you can click the bottom right-hand icon, whether you're on the iOS or Android app or on the website, Send us a message, share love, support, and if you would like to be a guest on any one of our shows, Resilient You with Alicia Pazzoni, uh, or Catherine and Company with Ms. Catherine Swain, or my show, you can email myself and my team over at power98.5radio at gmail.com or power985.com. Great lineup this week. Just yesterday alone, we had country music artist Derek Skelton uh, with his new hit release. We also had music artist Michael Brown based out of Canada. You can listen to those uh, right now, uh, either on Amazon Music, Amazon Audible, iHeartRadio, or Spotify. Remember, this is a radio show. It is not a podcast. We just utilize those podcast channels uh, for the best interest for our guest, so that when people Google search and if they're not able to tune in, like today we've got actor Eric Nelson. If you're not able to tune into the live or to tune in when we re-air these live shows, you can always check the schedule at power985.com or once again on the iOS or Android app. Uh, you know, there's a lot there. You can set an alarm clock. There's reminders. There's a lot you can do. That is a very, very interactive app. I'm actually going to go to it right now. Well, actually, I don't know. Um, I may be pulling up the music, so I may not want to do that. However, go to the app because I know it goes automatic play. There's a lot there. Give us a review. I, I know that we, we are really steady and holding strong five star reviews very appreciative love it and that's because we support the community we support the people uh we're not about driving sales and sales pitches and you know pushing things down you know things down your throat to to use uh satellite radio as a marketing stint we are a community here And it's about the people and for the people to learn about their stories and who they are and really being a true uh, media advocate for the public. Uh, Also, just a reminder, January 16th, if you haven't watched the new show on Netflix, and I'm a true new fan of this show, it's called Pressure Cooker. First season just released this month it came out. Robbie Jester is the winner. We're going to have him on my show on January 16th, tomorrow. Uh, that's going to be at 9 a.m. Pacific. And then we have HGTV's Mike Pyle, and that's going to be on January 17th at 11 a.m. Pacific. 
Uh, do we have anything else to share for the listeners? Or I know I had a couple notes, but I know, I, yeah, I've covered everything here. Once again, Netflix, new hit series, Pressure Cooker, Robbie Jester. Tomorrow, please, please tune into that because I definitely want you guys to share any comments, share reviews. If you've got any questions for Robbie or even today for Eric, uh, just click on that bottom right-hand icon, send it over. Or even if you want to give a shout-out, do that as well. Send us a message. Ah, this has been a long time coming. <laughs> Big shout-out to Mr. Marcos Papadados for setting this up. We've got... Actor Eric Nelson, he's an Emmy and Tony award-winning American actor and producer. He's known for his role as Enos, if I'm saying that correctly, in the Yellowstone prequel, 1883. On stage, Nelson portrayed Brett Simpson in the original Broadway production of 13, and he starred in The Good Mother. He has appeared in over 30 television series, including Hulu's revival of All My Children playing A.J. Chandler, a recruiting role in The Fair on Showtime, The Blacklist, Girls, The Following, NCIS, Blue Bloods, and iCarly. Nelson also appeared in the Universal Pictures film A Walk Among the Tombstones opposite Liam Neeson and in Coming Through the Rye, opposite academy award winner chris cooper eric welcome to the show it's great to have you steve so happy to be here brother. what a great introduction i really appreciate that <laughs> you're welcome and what accolades like you're hitting it and you're hitting it in the industry by you know making all the right decisions by going after top tier content and production you know it's been so much fun i i got into this business as a as a young teenager, I moved to Manhattan when I was 13 and started working as an actor pretty much right away at 13. And it was just a fun hobby that I, I knew I wanted to do my whole life growing up. And then there was kind of that point as I got older into my young adulthood where I was like, oh, wow, this is actually a career. You make a living doing this and this can sustain you for the rest of your life. So having that switch happen and, and really dialing in and, and going full focus on on film and television and, and stage was you know, best decision I ever made. And it's been so much fun. So it's, it's been a blast. It really has. I can't complain. Just so grateful for all of it. <laughs> what are you most proud of when, in, when we think about everything you're accomplishing? Cause you're a father, right? I am. I am. I was going to say if, if, if it's overall, it's definitely my two children. I've got a three-year-old daughter uh, and a one-year-old son. So by far highest accomplishment right there. Um, can't, <laughs> it's interesting because you know, my whole life was my career and, and, and the acting industry. And I put all my focus into that. Then I met my wife and I was like, okay, now this is my priority. And the acting thing, you know, comes below that, which was like, you know, had, had to transition there. And then the kids come in and it's like, oh my gosh, there's so many, you know, my heart is so full for so many other things. Now, when I thought at one time that the um, entertainment industry was going to be my entire being but it's interesting how things completely shift when you know you, you get new loved ones in your life and for the for the better it's been unbelievable what i'm impressed by and most importantly is you are a millennial however you have covered so many things in such a short amount of period in your decades even your last decade it's astounding of how seasoned and mature and elevated you are and it's expressed in a very very great way in the world steve i really appreciate you saying that you know <clears throat> i think when 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 you move to manhattan at 13 and you get thrown into this industry with majority adults you know your 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 whole kind of upbringing it definitely matures you quickly it, it it kind of you know puts you out there in a way that otherwise wouldn't be you know all my friends back in florida when i moved to new york were still just kind of running around the neighborhood and, you know, causing, causing kid trouble and doing their thing. And meanwhile, you know, I'm on, I'm on big picture studio sets surrounded by adults and, you know, for all intents and purposes, working as a young, um, you know, teenager. And so I did, I think all those things kind of lent themselves to, to allowing me to, to mature and, and grow up fairly more quickly than probably would have otherwise. And, you know, had a very supportive mother who, who was there every step of the way. And yeah, so I think it was just kind of all the, the right recipe for, you know, putting a, 
strong head on my soldier, shoulders at a young age. And I think in this industry, you need that. You need, you need that as quickly as you possibly can when you're entering into it. So had to had to learn that along the way. What are you most proud of, of what you've learned, uh, you know, coming out of the pandemic, being where we're at now? What have you come to find, to put it more specifically, area? What did you find out about yourself in realizing how resilient you really are? What's been your true resiliency? Wow, oh, that is such a great question. Um, I've, <laughs> you know, as as awful as the pandemic was, there really were a good amount of silver linings. I feel like that came from it, and. For me, you know, I think having that time to stop, to, to not, you know, not to just have my head focused on career and going and, and, and and pushing myself further and further. It was that moment of pause where I felt like I finally caught my breath and I was able to realize, okay, what am I doing? What do I want to be doing? And what did I do in the past that wasn't working? It was, it was just that time when I really got to do some self-discovery and come to the understanding of, you know, you might not need all these things that you thought you needed. And now that you have time to think about it, this is what you should be focusing on. This is what your goals, you know, were from the beginning that maybe you lost track of or sight of because we get wrapped up in the, in the flow of things. And so for me, it was really just the stopping of time almost and having that, that moment to center myself and to really come to terms with, not only who I was, you know, because I feel like we get defined as our as our careers are taking off and we get defined as the roles we're playing and, you know, all those sort of things. But really just putting all that away for a second and figuring out who I was and who I what I wanted to be and what I really wanted my goals, you know, to be set as. And that that calmness and that stillness allowed me to tap into that, which otherwise I don't I don't think I would have. I probably just would have been, you know, trucking along the same conveyor belt and not thinking too much about it. Do you believe it's added, you know, being a dad, uh, young dad with young kids, yet so advanced? And why I say advanced, Eric, is because time is moving by so quickly where people are taking more consideration and responsibility over the time that they have to meet to the goals and expectations and desires and, and uh, the dreams in life. Uh, What are you doing consistently every day for yourself and to inspire your children and your family? What takes precedence in your life now in order to be exceptionally extraordinary as a man and as an actor and a father? Well, I think for me, it was, it was, not defining myself with my career. I think it was, I think it was really putting that on a shelf and and putting my heart and soul and mind into my family, my wife and my children and putting them first and really taking that time to, to, to let them know, <laughs> you know, I'm here. This is, this is the most important thing in my life. And because there's so many times, you know, I'm gone, I'm gone filming for weeks and weeks at a time and I've got to leave my family. And of course, every day off I have, I'm flying back. So I'm not sleeping when I'm shooting anything these days, because I want to make sure every day I'm, I'm home that I'm not shooting. Um, but, you know, just having that time dedicated to them and making them the priority allowed myself to free up on the creative side, which ultimately made everything fit together like this this great puzzle when when you know when you're trying really hard and you're trying to press the pieces together and they're they're not working but you're you're relentless and you're just shoving them together and, and nothing's really fitting it's interesting when you step back put your focus on something else that that really matters so much more on such a deeper level like your children and your family the puzzle pieces all of a sudden kind of fit together seamlessly And it's when you're not pressing them so hard is when they're just kind of pop into place. And so for me, that's, that's pretty much, you know, how it went and and where I'm at right now and making them the priority always um, has, you know, done, done numbers to, to my life outside of my family as well. 
<clears throat> do you have any upcoming projects or what's on the table right now? Because I know, and I'm going to go ahead and read this. Um, as a producer, Nelson has won three daytime Emmys for The Bay and a Tony Award for the Broadway play The Inheritance. Those are huge. And I've interviewed other cast members from The Bay. What's happening? Are you on? Did you attend that red carpet premiere? Because I know something happened with The Bay recently, right? Yes, we did. We um, we just premiered some new episodes and they did have a, a, a premiere party. I was not able to attend, unfortunately, because of my work schedule. Um, but we do not have new episodes out as we speak. And um, I've, I've recently wrapped up a, a fun film called Holly by Nightfall with Jack Fallahy from How to Get Away with Murder and uh, other phenomenal cast. It's a youth ensemble movie. Um, so have that to be looking out for. And I'm actually about to go to Bentonville, Arkansas for five weeks starting February 4th uh, to shoot a movie called Shaky Grounds. Um, incredible director, Michael Garcia. He's a, he's, he's been one of the, one of the most prolific music video directors of our generation. And so he's going to translate that into a feature now. Incredible eye, incredible vision. I get to play a rock star in it. So I got to learn and, got to pick up and learn the electric guitar and I'll <laughs> sing and play four songs in the movie. So I'm really excited about it. Oh, I can't wait to see that. That's awesome. Seriously. Uh, and we got to get you back on the radio for that. Cause we're not going to have you here. Just be a one hit wonder. This is, these are people's lives, their jobs. And, you know, as someone who's in public relations and media, it is important to understand and to know Eric, the difference between, uh, sensationalism and I would say what would be the other thing you know advertising and editorial what I consider is when I think about actors and, and producers like you and, and directors and you know these are jobs and I believe for what it's worth when there is a new film coming out no matter whether it's on Netflix or it's an independent, or even if it's something that was shared or put on YouTube, people look for hope and you take and put a lot of trust within yourself to be able to live a passionate life, lifestyle and career. And with that, I really look forward to more people being supportive that you don't always need an A-list name or somebody famous because uh, I know distribution requires a lot, an A or at least a B list um, to uh, to have for distribution. And most media want to have that name. But here's the thing. We never know. At one time, Eric, your name and who you were was just starting out. And now look at where you're at today. And I, I really want to say that I am going to continue to encourage and to make aware and be very open and vocal that you never know who or when and where the next Eric Nelson is going to be in her life and in their career. And it's better to show and share respect now while they're beginning and doing what they're doing than until you have all of these accolades to then finally say you have worth, you are worthy to be on my platform, you are worthy to talk about or write about, let's be more supportive. So I just want to let you know that behind the scenes and in front of the scenes, and as I express all the time on this show, and as you heard Dan Aykroyd say, you know, he's positive, I am positive, and I'm also passionate. And what being positive and passionate I'm, I'm continue uh, to, and will continue to express to people to support someone like you and someone like you that is just starting out. That's incredible. I mean, it really is. And for any listeners that are out there that <clears throat> feel they maybe are that person that are just starting out and, you know, one day want to be, you know, talking on a radio show about all their films and TV shows and, you know, to, to have someone like you who's who's a champion of that and supporter of that uh, from the start, not just from, you know, from the finish line is uh, it's really incredible. And I wish there were more people out there that, that felt the same and, you know, had that kind of energy and, and support going. Um, but it's so true, especially, you know, in, in my industry, it's you never know who who's going to be the next 
you know, somebody, all it takes is that one job to really put somebody on the map and to, to put them in a, in a, in a light that, you know, feels like it was overnight. You know, a lot of the times the best saying I heard in, in industry was, you know, it took, <laughs> took 10 years, 15 years to become an overnight success. Right. Which, which says so much because you know, even, even from 1883, you know, I got, it's my first Western I had done and, you know, it was on such a massive platform because of uh, Yellowstone's success but a lot of the Western um, fan base had never seen my work or, or heard of me. And so when I stopped, which happens constantly out and about, uh, a lot of the times they're like, oh, it's so, so great. Congratulations on your, on your big break and starting in the industry. And I was like, well, I mean, I've, I've been here 17 years, but, you know, maybe in the Western world, it is my start. And, you know, for those reasons, you're, you're right. But um, it's, it's funny because you never know what's going to make you uh feel like a somebody to somebody else when maybe you you have been to other people for a lot longer period of time um it, th this industry keeps you very humble and uh puts you in check very quickly and uh, you're only as good as your last job so it's important to remember those things and you know just put your head down work hard and let the rest play out what would be your advice eric to any young professional, no matter what industry they're getting in or what they're passionate about, when we think about the awards and accolades that you've won, what has been the most impactful? Is it the body of work or is it the award? And the secondary part is do awards really define and make a true emotional and mental difference as an actor? You know, it's, those are great questions. They really are. Um, you know, the award itself, it, you know, it, it's just, it's acknowledgement and it's, it's, it's something to look at that tells you your work was appreciated. Um, your, the hours and sweat and tears and blood that you put into it um, was acknowledged and that feels very good. And it's a wonderful feeling um, to feel appreciated and to know that your work's um, making a difference and impacting people in a, in a big way. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it doesn't change anything in terms of, in terms of your work ethic, in terms of um, your goals and the way you approach a project or your work um it it definitely allows uh myself to um make phone calls to people that probably wouldn't have taken my call otherwise <laughs> uh you know it's easier to get meetings now and um you know they, they take you a little more seriously oh okay all they hear is emmy and tony and they're like yeah well let's set up a meeting you know where otherwise maybe wouldn't have gotten that call or, or that face-to-face -face meeting um but it doesn't change it doesn't change the work behind it and it doesn't change the drive and, and all of that, you know, it in no way, at least for me, it's, you know, you don't get comfortable or at least, you know, I found that if you start getting comfortable and like, okay, you know, let my work speak for itself. Now let the supporting actor Emmy speak for itself and things will come to me. I found that it doesn't work that way. It don't, I almost now have to work twice as hard because I have twice as much to prove and to back that up. You know, if, if they're awarding me with, with an award that's the highest award in television, that's saying I'm a that's saying my acting is wrong and my character was well developed and I I performed to the to the top of my ability. Well now that's expected of every single job I do. And so if anything, it just it made me work even harder to let them know that that wasn't a mistake and um, you know that I I, I don't take it for granted and I'm not getting comfortable. You know, I think, I think sometimes some actors feel that that's the cue to, to let off on the gas and take a breath for a second, but you know, too much life passes you by at that point. And there are too many other actors that are so hungry and starving for this industry that will end up taking roles from you because, you know, if you don't have that drive full force at all times, I truly think it's, it, it, it won't happen um, the way you want it to happen. And so it's just assurance to, to fight even harder at that point. <clears throat> Isn't that something it, uh, 
you accomplish something, you win something, and it brings a greater responsibility and requirement. <laughs> it's like you 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 reach certain levels, but it reminds me even back when we think of the or when I think of the mommy dearest um, mm. film and uh, and with the actress who played in that, she reached the top. And then there are people who reached the top in all the awards and then they, they're at a certain place in their life, a certain age. Uh, you know, mm. there's certain changes that have happened with goals and expectations by industry leaders. And it's like, what's next? Is uh, And here's a question from that. Do you ever... Let me rephrase. Have you ever thought to yourself, Eric, that there could be a um, plateau in your industry of wondering, just like what Faye Dunaway went through, what's next? What is really next in my career? Not only to portray, but is there going to be another role that's going to help me elevate as an actor? Do you ever believe that there there could be a moment of a pause because there may not be suitable roles for you to grow and elevate, and there also may not be suitable roles that could help you win more awards? Absolutely. I mean, you know, I'm at the mercy of 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 the networks and of the studios and of of other people to hire me. It's always, you know, please, I want this job. You know, I, I'm right for this. I, I'm fighting for this role because I'm, I can see myself playing this. And, you know, I'm always needing to rely on somebody else, it, it, except when I'm producing. But as an actor, it's always in somebody else's hands, the cards. And so there's always that feeling of what's next. You know, is it going to be fulfilling? Am I going to be taken seriously? Is Is it a step up and not a step down? And, you know, you've got hopefully people on your team, like a a great manager, you know, that's, I feel like one of the most important roles um, they play in your career is helping you make those decisions and, you know, really, really shining a light on, on what would be the next right step. And, you know, you've got your agents and everybody's kind of looking out for you and looking through scripts and and trying to help you. But even with the team of people, uh, there's still always, always that, that thought of, you know, Oh God, but what if, (laughs) you know, what if they, you know, find another Eric Nelson and it's, it's, it's not going to be my time or, you know, so you try to push those thoughts down and you try to, but it's hard because like I said, you're at the mercy of somebody else wanting to give you a job. And so it's, you know, unlike a dentist who opens their own practice and has a, you know, a thriving business and expects the same clients to keep coming back and they know that their lights will always be on because they're in charge we are not in charge of our destiny at all as an actor and that's that's a tough position to be in um especially when you're coming off of a long-running show or or what have you because you get comfortable and for a moment you feel like you're you know have a normal nine to five consistency in your life and then all of a sudden it's gone, you know, network doesn't want to pick up the next season or, you know, it's our last performance on stage because it's not selling tickets as well as it used to. And then you're back to the drawing board. It's back to what am I doing? How do I find my next job? And gosh, I hope it comes quickly. So it's an up and down battle, a constant battle, but you know, that's what also makes it exciting and you got to have super thick skin to do it. Um, but the reward is, is, is much greater than the risk. And, um, so for me, it's, it's all worth it, but it's definitely, definitely um an up and down battle to say the least i'm sure it may have been talked about or discussed by other actors or somewhere through time and in space is it nail biting to wonder wow we're done with the first season winning awards however it may be that you know the show had turned out is it truly nail biting to wonder, do I still have a job? Is there a season two? Is my character going to make it past episode number three? Am I going to get eight or 12 episodes? Do these things go through (laughs) your mind or other actors that you've worked with? Um, Is there more nail biting behind the scenes than what we really realize? 
It is. It is. And unless you're the title character on a series, whether where the series is named after you or, you know, you're Kevin Costner in Yellowstone, nobody's job is safe. Nobody. I mean, <clears throat> it's, you know, you're constantly needing to be on at all times doing your best where you can't slip because if you slip, you know, you're so easily replaceable. There's so many phenomenal actors out there who work hard. So it's what sets you apart. And how do you maintain and hold on to what you have at the moment? And the only, you know, there's no secret or recipe to, or book to read to, to teach you how to do it. Because at the end of the day, we're at the mercy of, of them. And if they decide we're no longer right for their vision, they're going to do what they need to do. But I found if you work very, very hard, if you're a good person and you're good to the people around you and you treat people with respect, you're going to be okay because what goes around comes around. I truly believe that. And at the end of the day, it feels like a big industry, but it's a very small industry and everybody talks and everybody knows each other. So if you're good to somebody and respectful and show up to work on time and do your job diligently and have your lines memorized and all of that stuff that you need to do behind the scenes, you're going to get hired again because people talk in the same way it goes reversed if you're one of those actors that is lazy or doesn't you know want to come to rehearsals on time or you know has a bad attitude and isn't isn't flexible on 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 the creative process that gets around too and people talk and people don't want to work with those actors so it, it really goes both ways and i just say you know be good to everyone you're working with and they'll be good to you and that's that's what's been happening to me and i'm just sticking with that <laughs> I love it. I really do. And why I say I love it is because you just shared exceptional advice for most people, uh, you know, because we hear these things about mental health. It's more than mental health. It's emotional health. That's where it begins, where we connect and how we connect emotionally to, to ourselves, to our family, to our friends, and also to the projects and opportunities that are offered and gifted to us in a world does being a father, does it have a huge impact on the way that you make decisions now in your life, Eric, and the jobs and roles that you take on? It does. It's, it, it's interesting because as I grew up in the industry, I feel like my, my, um, my motives shifted, my, you know, the way I, I approached roles and, and which roles I wanted to take and play shifted as I got older. And now that I have kids, especially, um, you know, cause now I'm thinking they're going to watch, they're going to watch my work one day. They're going to be old enough and they're going to want to see what daddy's done over the years and you know, what I continue to do while they're growing up and they're going to be part of it. They're going to be running around on my sets. They're going to be in my trailer they're going to be involved because that's my life and that's where I spend most of my time and I want my, my family with me at all times. So they're going to be really involved. And for those reasons, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm much more particular about, you know, what roles I want to play, what um, projects I want to be involved with because I want to be respectable. I want to, you know, set a good example for my children. And, um, you know, ultimately I, 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 I just want them to be, support of an understanding of what I do to the, to the, the best they can. And by showing them, um, you know, um, daddy's, you know, <laughs> not doing crazy, crazy things on television and film and is taking on roles that are, you know, challenging, but, but also, um, staying, you know, true to, to my character and, and, and my beliefs. Um, I think that'll just set a good precedent for them, um, in their own lives. And, you know, we'll, we'll make them appreciate my work even more. Who would you like to give a shout out to, Eric? Oh my gosh, so many people. I mean, Marcos for sure for 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 connecting us. Um, sending lots of love to you, brother. Um, Want to give a shout out to uh, Gregory Martin, our showrunner and creator of The Bay. Um, my family, friends, and to you, Steve. Thank you so much for having me. This is you know just been been an honor and I'm so happy we finally got to connect <laughs> me too it's been a couple it's been a couple of years if not longer I believe uh yeah I don't I'm gonna tell you I I found out about you back in 2012 
I believe it was. It was well over a decade ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, I heard about you. And <clears throat> I know we've been trying to get you on the show, um, you know, providing how our schedules are and traveling. Like, we, we just know how things happen. I don't know about you. However, the experience I'm having with you and on today and the the emotional self of where I'm at from going back to, you know, the the private personal conversation we had before going live, this feels really great. And I'm really, really happy that whenever and wherever things were postponed and that led us up to where we are at now and, and being here and being live and being in this interview together, I'm grateful to it and for it because I'm able to be over 1 trillion percent present with you. Um, not saying I wouldn't have before. I just know what I'm feeling today. And this month has been extraordinary on my emotional and mental health. And I'm so very blessed and grateful to have this opportunity with you. And thank you for gifting that to me and for you being who you are and so patient. I want to thank you for that enlightenment. Well, what a blessing that is to be in such an emotionally calm and sound place as you are right now. And I'm just, I'm happy to, to be in, in this, in this boat with you. And, and then we got to spend this time together and, you know, just, just so excited for everything you have going on. You, you've been incredible and I hope we can do this again soon. Absolutely. And I've got to ask, um, I'm loving the long hair from your post back on November 15th of 2022. You're in that, that Getty image. Uh, who took that? Roy Rockland. Uh, you look incredible. Are you keeping the long hair? What's happening? So I am keeping it for this next movie I'm about to do when I'm playing the rock star. Um, I will have to cut it at some point because it, we're in development right now, but I'm doing a, a series based on Will Rogers' life. And, uh, of course, the time period lends itself to shorter hair. So by the end of the year, it will be cut off. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be you know, trying to ride with it until then for sure. There's no way they can put your hair up and put it in a stocking or whatever it is that that may be and put like a, a wig or something on you. Cause I'm loving the long hair. It looks incredible. Thank you so much. <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a great question. I might have to pose that in the, uh, to hair on, on set and see if that is a possibility. Why not? Um, they do it for uh, what? Uh, Chris Hemsworth when he plays Thor. I mean, it's not like these, it's unrealistic that they're not putting their hair in stockings and putting another piece of hair on them. You know, you might've just completely, completely <laughs> opened my eyes to something here. And I think you're absolutely right. So it's a great question. I'm, I'm definitely going to, definitely going to pose that to production and see, see if I can get away with that. Cause then I can have the best of both worlds, I guess. Mm -hmm. And you're more than welcome to drop my name and, and, and let them know, you know, so they don't feel like, Oh, well is, is Eric being like, no, Eric, Eric has a great idea. He spoke with Stephen Cuoco and it's a legitimate, uh, you know, question because how many people in Marvel and uh, many other films who have hair pieces and mm -hmm. they're not cutting their hair off or how many times someone has to go bald and they're getting some sort of prosthetic or whatever it is to make them bald. They never shave their hair. It's very true. It's very right. true. Steven, you're on to something. <laughs> I appreciate it. I'm loving this. <laughs> All things exceptional and wonderful of Eric Nelson. Head on over to his Instagram at E-R-I-C-N-E-L-S-E-N -E 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 official. Eric Nelson official. Thank you again for being with us today. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5. Any closing thoughts, anything upcoming that we should know about and get ready for just to recap? Um, no, I mean, you know, other than we've got Holly by Nightfall that we just shot, that'll be coming out. <clears throat> we got Shaky Grounds I'm about to shoot, the Will Rogers project coming up. We got a couple other things in between that I can't share yet, um, but I'm very active on my Instagram. I appreciate you throwing out the handle. Everybody always spells Nelson wrong. They put N-E-L-S-O-N because that's the, you know, common way to spell it. But mm -hmm. mine is with an E. You just spelled it out. I really appreciate that. Um, but for anyone who wants to follow along, very active on my Instagram. Love to hear from the fans and people and 
um, always try to respond when I can. So please reach out and I'll, I'll see it for sure. And, you know, I'll, I'll um, send you some love right back and I'll keep everybody updated on my page. Thank you, Nelson. Thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Once again, all great things, Eric Nelson. Head on over to his Instagram, Eric Nelson Official, E-R-I-C-N-E-L-S-E-N Official. Ooh. Yeah, I'm having a, a really, really great moment. Like I said, it's, uh, this feels really, really good. Really, really good. Such a, And on a beautiful day as well. Uh, we're going to... Um, we're going to upload this, send this over to my distribution company. If you're just tuning in uh, or caught us at the end, I know we had some uh, uh, listeners that came in uh, towards the middle and towards the end. Really appreciate you and thank you so much. Uh, you can always go to power985.com, click live radio. Um, I believe it's live radio. Let's go ahead. You would think I would have it down uh, and by heart right now, but I don't mind. It gives me the opportunity. All right, power985.com. You can clip, click, yeah, it's live music or tap in live. Our schedule is there. Uh, when we re-air these live shows, always check out our schedule, whether on the iOS or Android app um, and or the website, and you'll be able to know what upcoming shows are happening. Also, um, you will be able to listen to this show uh, with Eric Nelson on Amazon Music, Amazon Audible, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. That will be available today. Um, and the link will be there. You'll be able to share it with your friends and family on your socials. Uh, once again, we utilize those platforms because they are really, really good platforms to be able to get more of the word out there. And also, just in case, if no one's able to listen live, uh, there is no reason why they cannot catch up and listen to the show on either one of those platforms. Remember, as a reminder, great, great reminder, to, uh, tomorrow already, uh, Monday the 16th, January, Monday the 16th, Netflix, Robbie Jester, he won, I believe it was $100,000 he won, he won the grand prize. Season one of Pressure Cooker on Netflix is airing now. That interview is going to be at 9 a.m. Pacific. And then Tuesday, January 17th, we have HGTV's Mike Pyle. That's at 11 a.m. Pacific. Thanks again to everyone for your love and support. And remember, we are your premier number one commercial-free destination of all things news, music, entertainment, sports, and only the important stuff on Power 98.5. Also... Add Power 98.5 in your Alexa skill. You can listen to us on Alexa 24-7, streaming live uh, in your home, in your car, wherever it may be. Very, very happy. We are in 200 countries. Very grateful for this accomplishment and all the love and support, especially to my team in Manchester, UK, and as well as New York City, where my team is at. Have a great weekend, everyone. Happy New Year, and as always, you are not just defined by the decisions you make. You are also defined by the actions you instill through the decisions that you make. Remember that. We love you guys. Have a great day. Socials and let's connect.